Hi, I'm Jim Stout, here with another edition of Tips and Tricks for the Phantom X. In this segment, we're going to cover the arpeggiator, the rhythm section, and some effects. So let's have a look. What's up? You got your boy, Direct, a.k.a. Native Shades, reminding you to like and subscribe, because today we're going to be talking about the Rolling Phantom X series. <laughs> what ha happened was... The Rolling Phantom X came out around 2004. Now, when the Phantom dropped, it had some steep competition with it. You had the Core Triton, known for its bright sounds, and you had the Yamaha Motif. That was a pretty, pretty dope keyboard. One of the outstanding features about the Rolling Phantom when it dropped was that it had so many features. <laughs> Okay, you have 16 tracks. You got eight audio tracks. You have USB connection. You have USB MIDI, okay? You have 16 pads on the unit and the pads and the keys are interchangeable. You have time stretch. You have real time time stretch. You have a time machine on the unit. Meaning like, let's say if you know you're playing something and you play a cool groove and everybody stops and says, hey man, what was that that you just played? And you're like, I don't know. And they're like, do it again. And you're like, I don't know what I did. All you have to do is, uh, the Phantom X has a time machine feature where you can go back 10 seconds and it recalls anything that you did within the 10 seconds. That's, that's crazy. You have a D beam feature, a beam feature where basically it's kind of weird, but all you have to do is pretty much wave your hand over the keyboard and and you're modulating the sound in the keyboard. So it's like you just wave your hand over the keyboard and you're like vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> The thing is bugged out how how crazy this thing is. It has a pretty good sampler and a pretty good sequencer with song mode. You had a feature that was a V-Link feature. Now this feature was so futuristic, we still didn't catch up to it. <laughs> it's basically a thing where you can hook up your, the keyboard to like this rolling program video. And as you're playing the keyboard, it's basically making effects on the, the live video you're viewing. So it's like when you're pressing a chord, something will happen, like the clouds will just burst open. Or like when you're running your fingers down the keys, all of a sudden you'll see music symbol signs uh, going across the screen. It, it's pretty cool technology, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that we, we don't see a purpose for it right now, but who knows in the future when we really get fly with this stuff. You can, you can record mute groups. That's pretty dope, you know, those that are used to the MPC kind of workflow where you're using the mute groups and you can actually record them. That, that's, that's a pretty dope feature. So this thing was so featured packed. It was almost like they were trying to make it future proof. Like anything that they're gonna come out with in the future, we're gonna have it covered. It was kind of like that. But the funny thing is low key, when this keyboard dropped, a lot of people had complaints. And they were complaining, hey man, I can't audition my sound before I put it in the sequence. Or, hey man, um, the synthesizer, I, I can't use the synthesizer feature when I'm in this certain patch. And what was really going on was that a lot of people were not reading the manual. Every complaint that the people were having that you can't do this and you can't do that, you actually could do it, but you just had to read the manual. You know what I'm saying? But you know how it is, man. We're all bougie. We're all stuck up. We're not reading no manual. <laughs> but if you read the manual, you'd figure out that, yes, you can do these features. And But even with all these great features, the thing that makes this keyboard stand out, the Roland Phantom stand out, is the realistic sound. And what I mean by that is everything sounds the way it's supposed to sound. If you want a clav, it sounds like a clav. If you want a rose piano, it sounds like a rose piano. If, if you want a grand piano, it sounds like a grand piano. Like there are times when someone's doing a gig and they, they might bring, they might have their main keyboard workstation and they'll bring another one just because it has a good rose sound in it. But no, with, with this unit, it, it's all in one. It's all in one in the box. You don't need another, you don't need to carry on another keyboard or anything like that. The sounds here are so realistic that it actually sounds like the instrument that you're playing. There's a story that this guy, he was working with a symphony 
and they needed a grand piano. So they was telling him, hey man, we need a recording of a grand piano. And these guys were experts, the ones that needed it. They've been doing it for like 50 years. So they know a true grand piano and some, you know, a simulation sample stuff. This dude is panicking. He's like, man, I gotta get this grand piano. I, I gotta figure this thing out. He goes, gets the Roland Phantom X, <laughs> goes in his bedroom, records the piece. He goes back to the place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Puts on a cast on his arm. He goes to the place and they, they listen to it and they're like, wow, man, this piano, this grand piano was incredible. W wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, where'd you get the grand piano? He's like, man, it, it, it was crazy, man. We had to lug that grand piano up the stairs. I had to call a construction company. I broke my arm. Man, I, I was able, I had to do it with my left hand. That's something we learned in Juilliard, man. You know, this guy... <laughs> He amazed these people so much that they paid him double of what they were going to initially pay him because of the grand piano in the Roland Phantom. The Roland Phantom played a pivotal role in the beginning of trap music. You had producers, T.I.'s producer, DJ Tomp. You had Jazzy Faye. You had Polo the Don. These cats was rocking out on the Roland Phantom. Um, Little John was still using it. Uh, um, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore was on the Roland Phantom. Now, when the Roland Phantom came out, it was about 2000 2000 and change, probably like $2,300. But it wasn't too expensive. You know, it was still affordable for the, you know, for the average serious musician. As far as the negative things I've heard about it, I heard the, the pads, the 16 pads that it has. It's, it's, I, I hear it's not the most comfortable pads. They're kind of hard. And, it, you know, it's a little bit of, some people complain it's a little bit of menu diving on this unit because it's so deep. Like you can get so deep into the menus, into the synthesis and everything like that, that it, it is a little bit of menu diving uh, if you're not used to it. But you, the great thing about it is you don't have to go deep. That's a great thing. You can use it as a simple dope keyboard. You don't have to get into the nitty gritty of it. But for those of y'all that are tweakers, and that like to tweak and like to go in, you can go in. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the Roland Phantom X. What had happened was, <laughs> so this is your boy Direct, AKA Native Shades, reminding you to like and subscribe. And I'm signing off. <laughs>